seated at this time. And uh, we uh, normally have a group of uh, veterans here. And today we've got one. And he's actually uh, was in the Navy and also in the Army. So he served in two different uh, services. And we appreciate that. Uh, I know, of course, some of our kids, their father also served in the Navy and the Army also. And so kind of unique. And then, of course, Bob was uh, in the Army also. And uh, he's deer hunting, I guess, too. And he hurt his leg this morning and okay. is having a hard time walk walking. Okay. So we remember him in prayer, too. We'll see him up and around again soon. So I'm going to go ahead and have uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Charles... Here uh, talking about godly men. We appreciate you, your service to our country, and uh, we appreciate you here too. But uh, he enlisted in the Christian Army too, so he's, uh, we appreciate him. He's done a lot for the Lord and uh, been a real blessing. He helps out the nursing homes and other places too. <coughs> Whenever he's need, I can always call him the Sarge here. He's always ready to go to work for the Lord. And he and I have had the privilege of many times being there. And leading somebody to Christ, who in a matter of sometimes just within an hour, would find themselves in heaven because they accepted Christ as Savior. And again, a lot of times, Brother Chuck was there praying as I was sharing the gospel with him. And oftentimes, he'd already shared the gospel as I came in. And uh, we had time, I think we had one year that we had like, I want to say half a dozen in less than a month's time that we led to Christ just before they passed. And uh, so just amazing. And, and what was amazing, too, is people said, they don't know anything. They don't know what's going on. But go ahead. Have a way. We'd go in there. They just completely came alert. Of course, God wants them to get saved. And we had perfect conversations. They knew exactly what was going on. They knew exactly what they were doing. And that, that's God, his mercy. And he had a wonderful God. But anyhow, he's, he's our commander-in-chief, okay? And I, I prefer him as our commander-in-chief. I trust you all do, too. So God bless you, sir. Thank you, And we appreciate you. All that you do. Okay. Turn around, Chuck. All right. Smile for the camera. <laughs> Smile for the camera. <laughs> Smile for the camera. You're on video, so you can go ahead. We're on video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I'll let you march out of here, sir. <laughs> Yeah, basically, he's still fit in his uniform, and I don't know if I should tell you this or not, but he hadn't moved the buttons over because it was so much bigger than he's lost weight since he was in the military. So, anyhow, we've gotten help here. Okay, so we're excited about that. So, we want to share some things with you right now. Of course, we have a number of other servicemen that are in the nursing homes, and uh, the most we ever had in actual attendance here, we had 17 servicemen in here at the same time. And almost every one of those uh, have gone to be with the Lord. And uh, when I say it, we've had other service people that have come in after those. Uh, but anyhow, that was a lot of servicemen. And many of them served in World War II. And we had even a, a larger group that had served in the Korean War. So we appreciate our veterans. And many of them said are already in heaven right now. So uh, we appreciate that so much. All right, we want to go ahead and children's church right now. Uh, let y'all head out. There goes all that energy again. And I, I don't know if you're going to practice plays or what. Okay. All right. If you have your Bible, turn to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel 22. And uh, this is a exciting message, I feel like, because it, it's, uh, we want to talk about veterans. And many of you, uh, if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, we have been called into a service. And there's not a one that can say, well, I'm exempt from serving the Lord. <laughs> because the opposite is true. We all have a place that we can serve God. We all have something that we can do for him. And let me go ahead and put it this way. We all have something that we should do for him as we serve the Lord. And that may vary according to uh, person to person, uh, things that we can do for the Lord. And so I trust that as we share from God's word that this will be a blessing to you. And it's amazing how many times the, the Word of God is like a mirror. Uh, we can look into it and see ourselves. We can see into our own soul. And so many times when we share from God's Word, 
if you look at all that's happening, it sounds exactly like what we're living through right now. It sounds like exactly what we're dealing with in our present time. And again, uh, God's book is so unique because it's alive. It's not like any other book that you've ever held. It's alive and it knows exactly what we need. It's amazing how many times uh, I've read a portion of scriptures and say Psalms 23, and I might read it at a graduation service. I might read it at a, at a wedding. I might read it at a birth. I might read it at a funeral. And I can just go on, but it's, it fits in every situation. It's just amazing because God's word is alive. And again, uh, God has so many things that he wants to share with us. And I love his love letter that he sent to us, different than any other love letter that we might possibly receive. But notice as we look here in Ezekiel chapter 22, and we want to read uh, from verse 23 to the end of the chapter. And so as we look here, I want to, give you the title simply is God is looking for a man. He's looking for a person that is willing to stand in the gap. And folks, it's like we need to be a lighthouse, if you please, in this present world. And I'll put it this way, we can say, well, it's really gotten bad, preacher. Have you read the newspaper lately? Or have you, and so they read the newspaper, have you looked at your phone lately? Have you looked at the, where you get your news from? And, and many of us would have to say, and I think we would all agree, that it's getting worse and worse every day. And, and you think, how can it get any worse? It just can't get any worse, and it continues to. And of course, God told us that this would happen in the last days, that it would continue to get worse and worse. And so with all that in mind, as we read God's word, uh, this situation that Ezekiel was living in was a very, very wicked time. There were a lot of things that were happening. And uh, as these things were happening, people had turned from God, had turned to all sorts of other things. Uh, wicked people were ruling in the world, and uh, the devil definitely seemed to be in control. And again, folks, realize that God's always in control, and that there's times that he'll let Satan, and many times it's, it's for punishment to encourage us to get back to God. And so as we look here, verse 23, uh, chapter 22 of Ezekiel, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. And you might notice that referred to the country as a her. And uh, this is God speaking. And he's speaking to this preacher. He's speaking to this particular individual named Ezekiel. And he's telling them that you need to cry out. You need to let people know that God knows what's happening. And you need to turn back to me. Thee, there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey. And he's simply saying there's a bunch of false preachers out there. And folks, uh, I don't know if you watch some of the uh, TV preachers or whatever. Are you aware that every TV preacher is not a good preacher? <laughs> when I say it, they may be able to speak and, and say the English language in, in such a perfect way or whatever, and they may be able to say things and go, wow, man, that's good. And they may have a great entertainment program, but they need to have God. They need to have God's spirit. And what's sad is when you find out that some of these churches that you see on TV, that the staff members are agnostics and we've gone down the list and things that they're not even Christians. And uh, anyhow, what a tragedy. And I won't name any of those particular churches. But again, uh, we need to realize that there's some false prophets out there. They have devoured souls. And folks, maybe just using a little liberty, it just basically said they've been devoured. They've been damned by the messages brought by these preachers that are preachers of the devil, if you please. They have taken the treasures and precious things, and again, the souls of an individual, the life of someone. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves raving the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. I don't know, does that sound a lot like our politicians today? <laughs> Uh, when I say, I, I mean, I know it sounds like our politicians, there's so many, they're in it for what they can get out from themselves. They could care less about the people 
uh, that they should be serving, they serve themselves. And it says they're like raving wolves and they don't care who they hurt just as long as they get gain. And so again, how frightening as we look at that and see what's happening. It says to get dishonest gain. Notice verse 28, and her prophets have dogged them with untempered mortar. In other words, they're billing a nation and they're billing it without God's help. They're billing it with the simplest, cheapest form that they can to make as much as they can. See in vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. And again, how sad. How I many people say, Well, God told me to do this. God told me to say this. And God says, I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing at all to do with that. What a tragedy. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. And we might look at that as they might say, okay, you have to wear a mask or you can't go to church or you can't, you know, all these different things. And, and then it says exercise robbery. And so, okay, uh, the newest thing is President Biden right now is planning on charging a surtax to the government uh, or to the petroleum companies. And in other words, uh, just use a crude example. Uh, if you're paying a dollar for a quarter of a gallon of gas or whatever, He's going to go ahead and tell the, uh, he's going to penalize our petroleum companies and say, okay, you have to pay 75 cents on that. So in other words, it would be something a dollar 75 almost double, but guess who pays that? You and I pay for that. So immediately our, our gas prices could have doubled from what they are right now. And so anyhow, all these are things that are happening. And I don't know about you, but it says an exercise robbery. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like robbery to y'all? And as a result, uh, all the food, uh, everything goes up because it costs more to ship everything. And so all those things says robbery. And here's what it says, and have vexed the poor and the needy. And folks, think if you poor and needy before gasoline shot up to the $7 in some places in our country, uh, the $7 a gallon, uh, wow. And that means food and everything else is going up. It's interesting when they were talking about uh, this this recession that we're not in, when they were talking about it, they were comparing it to what happened back in the 80s. There was a recession that took place. And they compared it and said, well, there it, it got up to 13.2%, the inflation did during that time. And they said, our inflation right now is only 9.8%. And the, the problem is the administration that we have now, they're using a different set of regulations and so they're not using the same standard that they used in, in 1980. And so here's the thing, if they used the 1980, uh, what they used for their standard then, guess what, you ready? Our inflation would be at 15.9%. <laughs> Wonder why they're using a different line. But anyhow, yeah, moving on, so it would make it the, the worst recession ever in our country. So all these things said, it says, and they rob from the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. In other words, uh, the aliens and others that they're long into our country. We could just go on and on. And sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. And so God said he was looking for someone that could lead Israel. Someone that would lead them in a godly way and lead them back to himself, back to God. And he said he couldn't find one. And then he says, verse 31, therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. Folks, when you do wrong, sooner or later it's gonna catch up with you. And sooner or later the law is gonna get you or something's gonna get you and you're gonna find yourself locked up or you're gonna find yourself sick, you're gonna find yourself poor or whatever all these things that can happen. He says, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. How can God bless a country that says, we don't love God, we don't let God exist. We are our own gods. That's part of the humanistic philosophy. We are our own gods. Wow, okay. I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, said the Lord. In other words, God will use the very things that they're doing to cause them problems and to cause them heartaches. But notice what's said in verse 30, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land 
that I should not destroy it, but I found none. And when I think of our veterans, I appreciate the fact that they were win willing to stand in the gap and that they were willing to fight as our representatives of our country, if you please, and for our, our cause, noble causes that we were out there for. And uh, I appreciate that, that they were willing to do that uh, from the human side. But notice, folks, you ready? This world needs Jesus. It needs God. It needs God more now than ever before. There's more people on the face of the earth than there's ever been before. And there's more oppression and other things that are happening. Uh, the world is in turmoil, not just here in the United States, but around the world. There's so much happening. And so as we look at these verses again, just to kind of give us a background of where we are today, can y'all see the similarities? I mean, do y'all feel like I was just putting a bunch of words in there that uh, doesn't tie to what's happening today? I mean, can you see today right here? Is it like reading today's newspaper in one sense? Of course, our newspaper is why I say everything is wonderful. And uh, they'll tell you since uh, Biden has gone in office, everything has just gotten so much better. Uh, but anyhow, we can see the truth, can't we? Things have really gotten frightening. Again, I'm so glad God is my chief commander and that we can follow him. So we need people that will be willing to stand in the gap. Are you willing to stand in the gap and make a difference? And folks, that's what we need, people that are willing to fill the bill, so to speak, and that are willing to make a difference with their lives and say, God, I'm in your service. Uh, Lord, uh, I, you didn't draft me, I enlisted. <laughs> and Lord, what do you want me to do today? And there's something that we could, and, and here's the thing, what we're doing is we're doing good. And, and we're spreading forth life instead of death. When we win a victory, it's when we get somebody that was dead and we bring them to Christ. And, and folks, that's a victory. And totally the opposite of what our military would do. They go and they destroy whatever to get people to submit. But our God takes those that are destroyed and gives them life. And uh, what a blessing that we can go and share that. Like I said, uh, Brother Chuck has been with me more than anyone else when we were leading someone to Christ that was just moments away, if you please, from death. Uh, it's it just uh, amazing that how good uh, God can use you for his honor and for his glory. So all those things said, before we go into it, I want to ask God's uh, blessing upon our message. And I want to ask Brother Chuck Swanson, if you would, to word of prayer, Brother Chuck. Thank you again, Lord, for this. Lord, today we thank you for the message we're about to hear, Lord, and have heard thus far. Pray, Lord, that uh, you'd be with everyone here, and that you'd be with our veterans, Lord, that, uh, and those that's in the military, even now, Lord, that try to protect our country from the evil shore abroad, Lord. And ask, Lord, that uh, you would just watch over each and every one of them, keep them safe. And we just thank you again, Lord, for all that you do for us. In your precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Chuck. And so as we look here, there's several thoughts when I think of a godly person or a godly man or a woman that is ready to stand in the gap. And I think the first thing that's most important is that they have a man after God's own heart. And that has a habit of trying to be with God's people and being around uh, God's word and being around God. That, that, that's just part of their habit, part of their life. So a man after God's own heart and habit. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 14 says this. And, uh, you're welcome to turn there. You just mark the verse. And I'll be glad to read it for you, of course. But now... <coughs> Thy kingdom shall not continue, referring to Saul. And Saul was the first king of Israel. And because he had sinned and turned away from God and was doing his own thing and still what God wanted, God took the kingdom from him. And he says, The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And by the way, this man that's referred to at this time that he was anointed, he was just a teenager, a young teenager at that. And uh, so it's neat that God can see so much more into the future. And of course, he was referring to King David. And so again, how exciting that our Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, came through this King David. So as we look here again, we see what God's saying, that sin will not continue. And folks, I'm looking forward to the time that we will all be with the Lord in heaven, those of us that have trusted Christ as our Savior.
but I hope that we're not going to be there alone. And, and when I say that, uh, we know that there's going to be a great multitude there, but I hope that when we go, that we'll take others with us also. And so again, that's the exciting thing, being able to serve the Lord. So when I think of a, a man standing in a gap, and again, uh, when I say man, I'm referring to mankind, I'm referring to uh, any person, but they need to be sound in the faith of the believer. Folks, I know I'm going to heaven, and it's not because of my goodness, but it's because of Jesus. And Jesus is the only way that we can get to heaven. And so my belief is, is, is if you're going to heaven, you have to have Jesus. And you can try everything else. You can be very religious. You can be baptized. You can be catechized. You can be, you know, if I'm just going down the list, all the things that you can be involved in. Uh, you can belong to church and all this. But that's not going to get you to heaven. It's your relationship with Jesus Christ. Was there a time in your life that you realized that you was a sinner and you asked God to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart and become your Lord and Savior? Many of you know, you've heard this over and over again, uh, that it was a sergeant in the Air Force that led me to Christ 60 years ago. And I appreciate Sergeant Davis uh, and his stand for the Lord. And he was willing to stand in the spiritual gap so that I, and he led many other people to Christ too, so that others could find Christ as their Savior. He led many of the enlisted men to Christ. I appreciate him so much. Uh, we had a lieutenant colonel in our church and he led many, many to Christ. And his children all became missionaries or pastors uh, around our country and around the world. And so again, I appreciate a man that's sound in his faith, that's sound in his doctrine, and he believes God's word and he does all he can to follow what God says in his word. And as a result, you know that when he speaks and, and what he thinks is based upon God's word. And then something else that that man should be, should be solid in his judgment of the Bible. In other words, he needs to be very familiar with God's word. And when I say the judgment of God's word, realize that there's a judgment for those that have not trusted Christ as Savior. And those that have trusted Christ, and many people fail to realize that there's two judgment seats. And again, there's the judgment seat of Christ, and then there's the great white throne. And the great white throne's for all those that are lost, that have never trusted Christ as Savior. And then the judgment seat of Christ is for those that have trusted him. And so again, and that's already determined when we're at that seat that we're going to heaven, but it determines the rewards that we'll receive or not receive uh, when we find Christ there at that judgment seat. And then something else, that his strength, that the one thing that this person that does that's filling at, that the strength comes from God's people, that it comes from the church and being active, working in God's army. Again, this is very, very important. Uh, so a man after God's own heart. But then he should be a man whose attention is to hear and to help. You ever talk to somebody and you wonder if they even heard anything you said? <laughs> you ever had that happen to you? And I think we've all been there. Uh, and sometimes it's sad that you realize that these people aren't hearing a single word that you're saying. But here it says, and what I'm trying to get across is that a man that loves God is ready to hear. But not only is he ready to hear, he's ready to help and do what he can to make a difference. Sometimes it may be just something as simple as taking somebody to the store. It may be raking somebody's leaves. Uh, it may be something physical along those lines or just taking a bag of groceries to someone. Uh, it, it may be any number of things that you can do to help. And then, of course, the spiritual realm it may be helping them to find Christ as their Savior and to have a better relationship. Maybe please help bring them uh, by bringing them to church. In Ezekiel 33, 7, it says it this way. So thou, O son of man, and that's again talking to Ezekiel, I have sent thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. And folks, if you please, that commission has been given to every one of us. God wants us to share with others. He wants us to be the watchman for the souls that are out there and about us. He wants us to make a difference in this world. I had the privilege of leading a woman of Christ uh, Thursday a week ago, and uh, they told me that she was very sick, that she would not live much longer. And uh, Wednesday, uh, she went to be with the Lord. And what I want to say is I had the privilege of leading her to Christ, and, and what a blessing. Her daughter was right there when I led her to Christ. And, 
Uh, and, and again, uh, I, I think, what if I hadn't found out about that person? What if it hadn't been shared with me? But someone said, do you, uh, as a minister, do you visit people that are dying? <laughs> Folks, you ain't with us, we're all dying. Gentlemen, we're all dying. And some may have, a, a, you know, may realize that according to the doctors or others that they're just a little bit closer to death than, uh, than others are. And what's sad is many times people don't realize that they're just that far from death. And so that can happen to all of us. None of us can say, well, tomorrow I'm going to do this and that. God says, the Lord willing, tomorrow I'm going to do this and do that. Because again, it's all in God's hands. And uh, God has an appointment set for every one of us. And uh, we might be surprised because it may be the youngest one in here that's the closest to heaven right now. Okay. But as we notice this, that we're born. So he called him a watchman. And again, I think everyone of us need to realize that God wants us to watch over his estate, that God wants us to be prepared to do whatever it takes to bring somebody to Christ. But also, when we think of filling that gap, that we need to be willing to be a good example. Oops. We can talk about all the good things and wonderful things of God, and we should. But what type of example do you live? Uh, you know, are, are you leading a, a life that shows that Christ is in control of your life? Are you living a life that would make people say, you know, there's just something about him. There's just something about her. I, how can they always be happy when the news is so bad? How can they always be happy when things are going wrong? Or how can they be happy when they're sick and have physical problems? How, what is wrong with those people? <laughs> and then you can share with them, Jesus is taking care of me. And folks, think about what's the worst thing that can happen to you? And somebody might say, well, I could die. You know, well, Philippians 121, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's a shame we get that all backwards sometimes, don't we? But how exciting that we can live a good example for others. Folks, the people need to see something in our life that would point them and show them that we have something that's good, and we do. And then we need to warn God's people about the enemy. The devil is out there and he's out to get us any way he can to cause us great harm. And then a man that actually is honest and humble. And folks, we got a lot of proud people. I don't know if you've looked at any of the politicians. Uh, some of them just so full of pride and just saying, look at what I've done. Look at what I, you know. And some of them were thinking, you think you're really doing good? And some of us have to say, who's he kidding? Does he really believe he, he's doing good? And, and we look at their life and look at things in their life and we see how just opposite it is. And yet they think, I'm doing a wonderful job. I've heard a president recently say that he has done more than any other president before him in recent years. He's accomplished more than any other president. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. I don't know about y'all, but it seems like a, a pride issue there. But we need to learn how, if you please, to be humble. Thank God for the good things that he's done in your life. But folks, remember, he's the one that's done the good things. Any good thing that you see in me, it's from God. It's not me, okay? Any bad thing you see, it's easy for to say, the devil made me do it. But folks, I hate to admit, a lot of times I just did it because I wanted to and I shouldn't have. But anyhow, move along. So we need to be honest. The Bible says in Romans 13, 13, let us walk honestly as in the day. In other words, if we knew Jesus was coming today, how would we live? If we knew he was coming today, if we knew that he was just an hour away from us, well, how would we live? I, I don't think we'd go out and live, up, uh, live like the devil, you know, and paint the town red or whatever they call that. But not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. So he said that we would live a life that would bring honor to him. Folks, do you realize Jesus could come? He could come before the service is over with. And I'm almost through with this service right now. But anyhow, we see that we should be upright in all of our transactions. We should be above board. I appreciate my children, uh, Lydia and uh, Matt, are going through a situation. They're having to deal with three IRSs. And when I say it, you know, they have the United States, they have New Zealand, and then they have Vanuatu. And they're doing things way above board. And yet when I look at the governments that they're dealing with, they're doing just the opposite. I mean, just the opposite of being above integrity 
as they've taken advantage of our children and of our missionaries, if you please. And so, again, they are continuing to do right. And I know that because of their attitude and their spirit, God will bless them for them. And maybe they'll see an IRS agent get saved, and that would be great. Martha was with me when we tried to witness to an IRS agent. And anyhow, another story uh, on his part. He did not trust Christ the Savior. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say is that we need to be upright in all our transactions. We need to have an unquestionable testimony that we do love God and that we want to live for God. And it's not because we, we thought God says, okay, you'll do this or else. It's because we love him and we want to please him. Folks, that, that's the way it should be. And then we should be undefeated in his task. What God calls us to, he will help us to have success. And folks, those things are so, so very, very important when we make the standing in the gap. So again, are you standing in the gap? How are you doing? Uh, I talked to one man just before services started. And he said that he wanted to go into the military and he went to, but because of a, I guess you say handicap, uh, he was not able to go even though he wanted to. I remember my grandparents back years ago, my grandfather, he's deaf and uh, he also had an identical twin brother, and he was also dead. And when World War I broke out, they both went down to join the military. And when they went there to join, they're going, you're deaf. There's no way you couldn't hear the enemy if they were coming. They said, well, we can fill it, we can fill it. And they did everything they could. They fought hard to get into the military, even though they were deaf, but they knew there was a, a need. They wanted to do whatever they possibly could to help them in our war effort. And I appreciate uh, my grandfather, my great uncle, and their willingness to do whatever they could. But again, I think you can see that the handicap that they had it was a tremendous handicap, not being able to hear and so forth. But they, they were ready, and their heart was in it. And so, again, what I'm trying to say is, folks, we can say, well, that, that's exciting hearing the preacher's story and, and hearing the story about him and, and Brother Chuck leading people to Christ in the last <laughs> moments of their life and how that God placed them. That, that's great, but, you know, he's a preacher. Man, that's Chuck, you know? So, <laughs> but, folks, what I'm saying, it's exciting hearing Chuck. I, I mean, it's so exciting because you can feel God's presence. And you feel God as he takes over your words. And then you see how God works on the ears of those that they won't know anything. <laughs> and you see God working in their heart. It's so exciting as you see this wonderful miracle take place. But you ready? God didn't say, I'm only going to do that for Chuck and, and Preacher. He'll do it for every one of us. And folks, it's so exciting. Seeing people trust Christ as their Savior. Seeing people that have no hope, trust Him. And how many times as we shared with them and when we came in, like I said, uh, Chuck can be my uh, witness to this and, and there's been others that have been with me in similar situations and some that were with Chuck and I. But you would see this, you go in and there was hardness and there was a sadness and there was just a gloom in, in the room. And what I'm saying is that as we shared the wonderful news, as we went in as a watchman, if you please, to, to warn them that the, the enemy, that the devil, he's trying to get you right now, and, and he knows that he's going to do everything he can to keep us from getting this message to you from God. And then when they receive Christ, even oftentimes you'd see a smile come across their face like, ah, that's what I needed. And many times they've actually said that, that's what I needed. I had one man, he said this, he said, wow, that's that's better than any doctor that's been in here to save me. <laughs> As he shared that with me. And folks, God is the great physician. And what I'm saying is that God knows exactly what we need. And to die here, if we know Christ, is to go into his presence. And you ready? I can honestly say that every one of those that we led to Christ, not a one of them deserved heaven. You ready? Myself and Chuck. We don't deserve heaven. But we're going to heaven because of what Jesus did for us. Jesus is the one that can take care of you. 
And he's the one that can help you to stand for him. And, and what a blessing that people might be able to look into your face and, and once and see the Savior. And, and that God has called us so we can do this tremendous work here right now for his glory. Folks, there's nothing greater. Uh, again, I don't know if you look at me as an Uncle Sam or whatever. <laughs> but I hope that you can see Jesus in me. And that you can see, again, the good things that we share with you are from God. And God wants to help us to do all we can to help others to find him as their Savior. No greater work. Would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time that we can share your word. Thank you, Lord, that you made it so clear that you can use anyone to bring somebody to Christ. That anyone... And Lord, that you use us to save people. You use us as Christians in the Lord's army. And many times in the scriptures, uh, Paul would refer to military terms as he was talking about other witnesses and as he was talking about his own witness, his own testimony. And Lord, help us to, to see the importance of, of being enlisted. And those of us that have trusted you as our Savior, we've enlisted. But Lord, so many times we, we have been delinquent in our duties. Uh, we're, we've been AWOL. Even though we belong to the, the Lord's army, we haven't been faithful to do what he has called us to do. And so, Lord, help us to see the importance on this as we celebrate Veterans Day, so to speak, this Sunday. Help us to see the importance of being involved in the, the, the fight, that there is a war that's taking place in this world right now, that Satan's doing everything he can to destroy as many uh, souls as he possibly can and Lord help us to realize that you're doing what you can but you have to work through us and as you work through us Lord we can make a difference for eternity in the souls of those that we come in contact with Lord help us uh, and I think of that sergeant in the air force again and sergeant Davis took me through the sinner's prayer and simply had me repeat after him I said dear Lord Please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. And I prayed that in your name. And you heard that prayer as I copied the, the sergeant's voice, as I copied the, the words that he said. And Lord, I've never been the same since. And the, the sergeant shared his testimony with me and he was totally changed after he got saved. And Lord, I'm so thankful that he did. And I'm so thankful that he just didn't hog all that to himself but he shared it with others. Lord, I, I thank you for uh, that testimony. Lord, help us to, to fill the gap. Help us to stand and make a difference, to be a bridge to heaven for those that need you. Lord, help us to realize that you can and you want to save everyone. Lord, help us to pray for our president, our vice president, the speaker of the house, Others that are in positions of leadership, our governor, our mayor, we could go on and on. Lord, help us to pray for them, to pray specifically for their salvation. And Lord, help us to realize that they can get saved. Thank you for the many times that you've done that, Lord, that you've saved those that were so unsavable, it seemed like, because you are such a loving and merciful God. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you, to not be able. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Are you enlisted in God's work? If you're a Christian, you, you are. But it's sad that there's some that they go AWOL for whatever reasons. And sometimes those reasons sound so good to them. justified in not going to church. You're justified in not giving to the church. You're justified in not talking to him. And he'll make you think that everything's okay. Folks, he's a liar and always has been. He's the father of all lies. That's what Jesus said about him.
Sierra's uniform today, and I appreciate that very, very much. And, uh, uh, and what I'm trying to say, Ephesians chapter 6, which you can look it up, uh, from verse 10 on down, it talks about the Christian uniform. It talks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation and carrying uh, the shield of faith with you, then having the sword, the word of God, uh, in your hands and have your feet shod with the preparation of peace. And, uh, and your lawn's girt about with truth. Uh, wow, I mean, God gives us that picture. Of course, you can picture a Roman soldier dressed in that particular attire. And uh, it would help them. They were ready for combat. They had what they could to keep them, uh, if you please, safer in hand-to-hand -hand combat than other groups that they would go against. Uh, and the government did everything that it could to have them properly prepared. And folks, our Lord has done everything he can to prepare us. But if you don't put on the armor, if you don't put on God's uh, uh, uniform, if you please, we're going to have some problems. But I'm glad that every one of us, God has what we need to help us to be faithful. And as a, a veteran uh, in the Lord's army, we're always active. Uh, there's never a place until we find ourselves in heaven. And in heaven, I, I think that we'll probably still be praying for folks down here, you know, praying for them and showing our concern in heaven just as Jesus is praying for us right now. So anyhow, folks, there, there's a battle to be won. And we can win it. Follow our commander. And we've got it. Okay? So God bless you as we uh, go our separate ways. Continue to pray for our young people as they're working on this play. And, and you have seen it through the years how many times God has used our Christmas uh, program bring people to Jesus and it's just been really really exciting uh, the things that we've seen happen and so again we want to pray for that and uh, that God will use these children in a very wonderful way I'm glad they're willing to do it I don't know about you but when I was their age I had stage fright for kids standing in front of anybody I, I've gotten over a little bit but I, I can only then cook Lord's help so all that said we want to go ahead and dismiss in prayer and I'm going to have Braden, and he'll be preaching on, in March at our youth rally. So you'll make plans, and you'll come to hear him. Uh, his mom's going to be doing the, the, the program as far as the games and stuff like that. And then the rest of us will probably be serving and some other things. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, but pray for uh, Braden, that God to give him the message that he needs. And it's neat, you know, my mind sharing this whole, but, you know, he said, preach going to do it anyway. So, <laughs> but uh, when I asked him if he would preach for the youth meeting back probably about a month ago, six weeks ago, something like that, uh, he said, you know, that's been in my mind and my heart uh, to preach. I, I've been wondering, thinking about that. And, and then I come up and so it was just like God had prepared for it. And I think that's neat because uh, it wasn't just preachers saying, hey, I want you to do this or whatever. But he knew that God had already got his heart ready for it. Isn't that great? I can't wait to hear that message, can y'all? Okay, but we'll be six more solar. So, I, yeah. But would you dismiss us in prayer? Dear Father, now thank you for this day. Thank you for the message that you have given the pastor. I pray that we'll all be able to, we will all be able to apply this message, and we'll be able to stand strong. And I pray for safe travels so that everyone goes home, and we'll all be able to withstand the lies of the devil. In Jesus' name, Amen.